Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur Media and Yelp. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. Today, we have Jennifer Allen, the VP of Restaurant Operations for Levy Restaurants. If you don't know who Levy Restaurants are, they are in 250 locations nationwide and globally. They have over 50,000 employees, and pre-pandemic, they were doing revenues of $1.5 billion. Chances are you live in a location where they are operating in a stadium, in an arena, at a concert venue. They are an incredible brand. If you know who they are, our job is to introduce you to Jennifer and what the incredible work that she does with the brand. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. Thanks so much for having me. That's it's overwhelming to even hear about Levy as working here for almost 14 years. But yeah, thank it's, you. It's very, it's very impressive. And your trajectory and your growth as a leader within the organization is also something that we're going to touch on. But I'm going to start with our favorite random question. Our favorite random question couldn't be better because of the seat that you sit in. But where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Oh my gosh, it's so hard to answer. Um, I would have to say Wrigley because I'm a Chicago Northsider um, and native, and uh, you know we've had our ups and downs over the years. Um, and of course, the food's amazing. So I would say definitely Wrigley Field. Go Cubs! Okay, there you go, Wrigley Field. So we're going to go to Wrigley Field and Levy Restaurants, Entrepreneur Magazine, Toast, our title sponsor. They're they they believe in this show. They've uh, you know supported this show. They are our technology partner at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. But we're going to convince everybody that we need to go to Wrigley, we need to shut it down, and we need to invite all the best people in hospitality. So whoever's playing the game within the game, the people that are listening to the show, watching this show, the people that are inspired to be better every single day, that have that Mamba mentality, we're going to bring them to Wrigley, and we're going to put you on the pitcher's mound. And I'm going to give you two minutes. Say, who is Jennifer Allen? Who's Levy Restaurants? Can you uh, give us that two-minute drill? Yeah, awesome. So um, I have been with Levy. I've been a restaurant girl for my entire career, but I've been with Levy um, for almost 14 years now. Um, and I started out um, as a director of operations on the North Shore at Ravinia Festival, which is an outdoor music festival, seasonal property, hard to flex for a seasonal operation, but it was a cool opportunity for me to kind of dip my toe in the water with Levy. And a couple of years after that, I was promoted to a regional manager and then grew to regional director. And obviously my uh, region grew um, and my responsibilities grew. And I've been sitting in the role as um, vice president overseeing the restaurants division for six years now. I love it. Can you give us what's what is the philosophy, the guiding philosophy behind Levy Restaurants? I mean, really, our culture is about finding the most passionate people to become a part of the family and to create, as simple as possible, the best guest experience. We're innovators. We're very passionate. We do have the sense of family. It's a family-founded company. So that's really kind of our core value. So it, it's interesting to me because we talk a lot to small business owners, restaurant owners about branding. You know, we say ABB, always be branding. And one of the difficult things for a company like Levy Restaurants is you're a brand behind the brand. So I interviewed Noah Glass, who's a, who's, who is the founder of Olo. Olo is a company that literally they build the technology that powers cheesecake factories, five guys restaurants, publicly traded company, 82 million transactions a year, but nobody knows who Olo is. And it's kind of the same way with Levy restaurants. You guys aren't forward facing. How do you celebrate the restaurants that are forward facing, that are, are where the actual guests are going to be eating in the stadiums? Yeah, so I think one of the things that's really interesting about Levy, the restaurant division, by the way, 44 years strong, the restaurant division are the OGs to Levy. We started <laughs> out as restaurant tours. We started in it. Chicago with a family founded, Larry Levy and his brother, Mark, and their mother, Edie Levy, who kind of was like the backbone behind the recipes and kind of kept them in line. So it's kind of cool, but we, we've never really opened... Um, other than Jake Melnick's, which I know we'll probably touch on a little bit later, we've never really cookie cuttered the same concept. We yeah. have unique entities. Um, so across the restaurant group, every single concept is unique in its own front. So that's what we put forward. We put forward the leaders within that, 
that location, the concept um, that makes sense for that particular market we're putting it in. Um, so we we are under the Levy umbrella, but don't, you'll you'll never see my face really occasionally on the podcast <laughs> here and there, occasionally in an article. But yes. it's all about our chefs and our locations, our leaders that are our proprietors and kind of we call them our innkeepers because that's they treat it like they're it's their own and and the concept. So you really won't see much of Levy. You really won't see much of me. Even how we brand our gift cards and our e newsletters and all the marketing is all individual to each unique concept. So can you bring me back to when you first started in your Levy journey? What what do you think were the qualities that allowed you to stand out in a typically in the sports entertainment male dominated profession? You're in a leadership position. So you obviously you were doing things differently. Well, what kind of qualities and, and can you expand on that? Yeah, I think one of the things that was really interesting to me about Levy and the time that I joined, which was like, I think it was January of 09, was that I actually, there were a significant amount of female leaders in this company that was mostly sports and entertainment venues. Within the restaurant division, we had a lot of female um, leaders and it was it was very appealing to me. It was appealing to me because of, there were female leaders, but also because of the opportunity to growth in the company, not only if I wanted to stay in the restaurant division, which is kind of true to my heart, that's how I grew up and that's where my passion is, but I knew I could grow within any other area within the company, whether it was a home office corporate position or it was in sports and entertainment ops, um, and also our parent company, Compass Group. But I think one of the things that was really appealing to me is that we always think about us as a family first. We're a group of people that actually enjoy each other's company outside the office. We hang out, we do things together. Um, and, you know, we've been around for 44 years, so I knew it was a stable company and an opportunity for growth, um, especially for females. When you when you started, was there any female mentor that made an impact on you? Do you have a, a story? So we talk about lessons and stories. Is there a story that you can give us of something that maybe you thought was supposed to be one way and someone enlightened you that it was supposed to be? It actually works a different way. I mean, there's a couple stories. Um, you know, this industry, as you know, is so incestuous and you never burn a bridge and, you know, you're always kind of past paths with people from your history. And um, one of the people that brought me on board, her name was Carol Daniel. She actually was in my role when I came on with Levy. She oversaw the restaurant division. And I'd worked with her previously at Wolfgang Puck um, as an area director for her. And um, she, she brought me in and our CEO at the time was also female and our EVP of HR was a female. And by the way, most of those roles today are now females too, maybe not the same people, but um, so that was the thing that really kind of got me on board. And I actually took a step back in what I was doing with multi-unit to get my foot in the door with Levy because I knew there was an opportunity with growth and because I was surrounded by female executives. So that was really appealing to me. So explain multi-unit. Well, what's the difference in, in the thinking behind the multi-unit versus the other role that you were in? Yeah. So the, so the role I was in before was actually multi-unit. I grew up a restaurant girl. And um, my last kind of gig before joining Levy, I was overseeing multiple um, food and beverage departments for eight hotels in the Chicagoland area. So I was bouncing around for eight different locations. And then when I came on board with Levy, it was with one site, single unit, Ravinia Festival, seasonal. And then in the off season of Ravinia Festival, I got to kind of dabble and see other locations within Levy, but I was really focused on one venue, again, to put my foot in the door to grow with Levy and here I am today. <laughs> when, you, when you're building out these restaurants and you're looking to add talent to the team, what are you looking for? Oh gosh, um, people who have their own ideas, people that are passionate. Um, we always say it seems so silly and cliche, but we only hire nice people because you can't teach nice. That's innate. You know, it has to kind of so your parents give that to you, right? And how you, your environment growing up, um, it's attitude. Um, you know, I'm not gonna lie. We all work very, very, very hard. We move mountains um, in minutes as most of us do in this industry. But yeah, people who are passionate, people that are willing to learn, people that are innovative, people that are willing to think outside of the box and do things differently, um, you know, and, and inclusion right now, obviously, like we want people that want to, big team of inclusion and difference to make the whole a better place to be, right? Yeah, that's 
for me, it's always interesting. It's so fascinating. I mean, we're, we built our brand on sports entertainment. Literally, we took over our barbecue concept. It was a breakfast restaurant, but we added the sports entertainment content, concept. We brought in different partners that we worked with, whether it was the Chargers, the Aztecs, the Padres. Eventually, we were at a Levy property, which is Pachanga Arena, and we were working with the Levy team. It's so interesting to me from a restaurant perspective to see the similarities of food and beverage and what we like to call slow food fast. So a lot of the content that I've read and researched about you guys is this frictionless experience for the guest, but an elevated food experience. And I think that's the holy grail of what we're all looking for. It's like, we want to go and enjoy sports entertainment. It's easy to, you know, be a Cubs fan and go to the Cub, you know, go to Wrigley Field. For me, you know, being a Padres fan, of course I want to go to Wrigley Field or any of these properties that you guys have, but how do you make it more? How do you make it more memorable and how do you go beyond that? Can you talk about that? Yeah, I think you just kind of hit it right on the nose as to kind of what our unique selling point is. So again, you know, our roots are restaurant tours. So I think one of the things that's really appealing to a lot of our sports partners um, is the fact that we bring that level of expertise and we're trying to give restaurant like quality and service and experience as a whole, as you would get in a restaurant in these kind of you know, broader venues where typically the expectation is I'm going to hot dog and that's all I'm going to get. And I'm going to have to like get up out of my seat to go get it. And so our whole goal has to be to, to bring the restaurant quality food service, um, innovation, experience technology to that in-seat service, mobile ordering, all those things that you see now, walk out, just walk out concession areas and grab and goes. So that's all stuff that we've really put on the map as a company and is our unique selling point against all of our competitors. Can you bring us to the basic level of logistics within a stadium operation and throughput? It's one of the most important things that for people that don't know that aren't actually in this stadium high volume environment, what is throughput and how are you designing the guest experience to better serve more guests? I'm probably not the best person to talk on throughput, but I can tell you. <laughs> You've got throughput experts on the team? We have literally a group of experts. It's all they do. We have a, a branch of our business called E15, which is all our data, data analytics. We felt so strongly of data, 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 instead of our anecdotal stuff that we've yep. you know, kind of used over years um, to help us figure these out things out that seem so simple that really aren't simple. You're trying to move the masses yes. through these QSRs or these concession stands. So they really helped us figure it out from the guest experience, from the, the hybrid of technology that works for some demographics. Like some demographics don't know how to use a smartphone. So there's a hybrid where you have guest greeters with you know tablets to help that guest. And then you've got people who can do it from their phones how we set up the equipment, how our cashiers are, how the pickup is using robots for some of our, you know, fry baskets. and Really products. amazing. What kind of robots? Um, you know, I'm, I don't even know what they are. We, we did some pilots with that. I think it was actually a Dodgers. Dodger yeah. Stadium with, yeah, with Joe, I, before Joey yeah. got there. So Joey Smith is is who we've had on the show before on our digital yeah. hospitality show, but he, he used to run San Diego, moved up. Yeah. And I, I read about it. I mean, I read about what Levy was doing, which is very innovative. And I love the fact that you guys have this forward thinking technology hub. I mean, it's something that we truly believe in. We wouldn't be podcasting as a barbecue brand. We wouldn't be teaching other restaurant owners why what we call smartphone storytelling is so important, why it's important to share your story if we didn't believe in technology. There's never been a time where we've had so much ability to share our story within our restaurants. What kind of work do you guys do on the marketing side, on the branding side, of the properties within these stadiums? I mean, so again, I'm on more of the restaurant side, but we do have our own dedicated, you know, marketing communications team. We hire PR specific for each market, I will say. So, and this is kind of overarching for both restaurants and the sports and entertainment side of the business. Um, but we do have uh, marketing teams. We have on-site marketing managers as well, a lot of our stadiums and arenas. And we obviously partner with um, the teams and the venues as well with their marketings and communications teams. And now a quick break from our show, Restaurant Influencers, to talk about our newest sponsor, Pop Menu. Restaurants have been hit hard over the last few years, which means restaurant owners and staff have been working harder than ever. Trying to meet the demands of in-person hospitality can be very demanding. 
This is why we recommend Pop Menu Answering. Pop Menu Answering turns every restaurant phone call into an opportunity. It uses artificial intelligence to answer the simple questions that are tying up your phone lines. Like, can I make a reservation? Where are you located? Do you still have brisket? And over 50% of restaurant guests are happy to have their questions answered by an automated system. Within the Pop Menu platform, you can customize answers for your restaurant and choose the voice your guest hears, which we recommend is your voice, and even send follow-up messages via text message. Pop Menu Answering picks up your phone 24-7, 365 days out of the year, allowing you and your team to focus on what matters most. Prevent lost customers and impress your guests with Pop Menu Answering. And for a limited time, our listeners get $100 off your first month. Plus, lock in one unchanging monthly rate at popmenu.com slash influencers. Go now to get $100 off your first month and learn more about Pop Menu's full collection of tools at popmenu.com slash influencers. And now back to the show. What is the most exciting thing for you every single day when you wake up? What pulls you out of bed? You know, it's it's something new every day. Um, So what's interesting for me right now, you know, we've got 20 something restaurants coast to coast right now, um, which is amazing. And that is enough to keep me busy. But 20 restaurants, right? Yeah. Um, How how many employees across the 20 restaurants? Oh, I I can't even tell you. (laughs) I'd have to get back. Hundreds? Hundreds. Oh, yeah. Thousands. 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 And, it, and the interesting thing in the restaurant group portfolio, we not only have like four well freestanding restaurants, like we have River Roast in Chicago on the river, Jake Melnick's Corner Tap, but we also do a lot of partnership with some interesting venues like Harley Davidson Museum um, in, in Milwaukee, Ravinia Festival, which is an outdoor music festival, Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. So it's not just true restaurants. We partner with um, American Girl for their two flagship locations in Chicago and New York. We do the cafes. So it's really interesting. Um, And on top of that, you know, we're always looking for new business opportunities. And right now there is a ridiculous amount of unprecedented um, new business opportunities. The activity right now coming, if you want to call it coming through or out of COVID, is bananas. <laughs> yeah, and I'm so sure. that's really exciting because a lot of, you know, my time during the week is talking about that and drumming up new business and talking to different partners and how we operate our businesses right now are really the engines that are propelling us to get all of this new business because we're performing so well and we're in so many different markets and we get to hang out and operate with so many cool partners that it just opens up conversations for new business. So it's been that's what I love about my job. So can you tell me about the restaurants that you guys do own and operate? Yeah, so we're all over the place. Um, so Chicago, we're based in Chicago. I office in Chicago. Yeah. Um, so River Roast, which is on um, the river in River North, um, amazing concept in its own. We're celebrating, I think, our seven-year anniversary this year. Awesome. Um, Jake Melnick's Corner Tap in Chicago. We're celebrating 20 years of being in business Incredible. next month. 20 so years. That's of celebrations going on. That's um, amazing. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. In fact, Jake Melnick is in our building right now doing yeah. a podcast internally for Jake and Melnick. There you go. <laughs> funny that I'm sitting here. I was past him in the hallways. You know, he's not traditionally here every day. I love it. Um, and then um, we've got Harley Davidson Museum in Milwaukee. We've got um, two um, restaurants, Paddlefish and Terralina Crafted America, uh, tra- Crafted Italian, that are on Disney um, property in Disney Springs in Orlando. We just opened three restaurants downtown LA um, last November through March. Wow. We just launched these. So we've are got- these restaurants? Are these re- freestanding restaurants or within stadiums? These are freestanding restaurants wow. and, and our partner is with the LA Music Center. So it's right downtown. And so we opened a restaurant called Abernathy's, Kendall's, as well as Astrid. And we partnered with um, Chef Ray Garcia for Astrid. So that just launched in March. So like there's a lot going on, a lot of excitement. We have restaurants just outside of Portland, Oregon, in a casino, an Atlanta right. Casino Resort. So we operate a Michael Jordan Steakhouse there with our partners from Cornerstone that are from Chicago. Very cool. um, and we also operate a restaurant called Lion and Lore Seafood Kitchen and Tap, which is kind of a nod to the Pacific Northwest. So yeah, That's we're it. kind of, all, I'm sure there's more I'm just not remembering right now. So on a, on a weekly basis, what kind of key KPIs are you looking at for your restaurants? What kind of key performance indicators? Uh, 
first and foremost, we're looking at our guest reviews. How are we doing? What's the vibe? What's the temperature? You know, what do we need to take with a grain of salt? Quite honestly, which, which platforms are you focused on? Oh my gosh. So we actually have a, um, a platform called Review Trackers that scrapes all of them. So it awesome. takes your Yelp, your Google, it takes all of like the social media platforms, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, it basically scrapes all of them mm -hmm. and it kind of congregates it into one report to us. So that's been an amazing tool to just get a temperature for what people are saying and are there trends there that we need to address and are we engaged with our guests and are we saying thank you for your feedback and are we inviting them back and so that would be probably the number one um people engagement i mean even though we have so many locations i'm doing regular reoccurring touch bases with all of our property chefs all of our property leaders that's really important to me that engagement um, you know, we want to retain our staff. They're our, our most important thing to be able to operate now more than ever, right? Yep. So that's a big thing for me. And then obviously the health of the business, you know, what are sales looking like, looking like, you know? And so I think those would be probably the top three or four KPIs for me. So when somebody's listening to this and they realize that there's Levy restaurants located where they live, what, why, why should they be thinking differently about the hospitality business? Why should they be thinking about Levy restaurants? I, we serve the best food. <laughs> we have the most, most amazing chefs. Yes. Um, you know, one of the things that we really do focus on when we are entertaining a certain concept, it's not, we never come with the mentality of if you build it, they will come. We do a lot of investigating and market research, data analytics to figure out what makes sense for each market. We're looking for something that's an emerging trend, but that has some legs to it. We're not just looking to do the same thing that, you know, repeat what someone else is doing in the neighborhood, but we also want to make sure we're appealing to that specific demographic, that market. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, again, and then taking whatever that concept is to the next level with adding some amazing table side service nuances like River Roast. We have this very simple concept that was all developed around a whole chicken that is cook specially that is crispy skin super juicy to these incredible ovens that cost us a fortune to be able to do these chickens 26 minutes a whole chicken is is cooked we roll them out on these specialty carts we carve them table side and the whole focus of river roast is to have that piece in the center of the table to put phones down and everybody to focus on center of the table conversation over the food bringing us together and all of our roasts and our proteins are served that way carved whole table side. And so we create unique experiences just like that. Uh, can you talk about partnerships and how important it is to lean on, on your stadium partners? The fact that you have, you know, major league NFL teams, you have uh, baseball teams, NBA teams. How do you lean on your partners and, and what do you do to develop deeper relationships with them? Oh my gosh. So um, our partners um, are so important to us, obviously. Um, and from, from restaurant partners to stadium partners and the integration of all of that, it's what also makes us unique. So for example, you know, I was telling you, we don't really do cookie cutter concepts. Um, but one of the things that's really cool and unique, Jake Melnick's again, for example, we have this amazing, you know, United Center. We've got the Blackhawks, we've got the Bulls in our backyard here. And we've got yeah. Jake Melnick's who is a Chicago staple for 20 years. So partnering the local community, local restaurants, from Levy and beyond, right? So we work with other restaurant partners to get in stadiums as well. And our, our sports partners trust that we're gonna do the right thing by them and bring the right partners in play, not just selfishly for us to bring our, our food in. Jake's happened to be one of them. Same thing, Cornerstone Restaurant with um, the folks at Jump Hire, Michael Jordan's team that operates restaurants. We brought them into other different partnerships. Um, they thought of us for uh, the casino environment because they nice. didn't have human resources out there. So it's this great collaboration of going back and forth and kind of scratching each other's backs, not considering each other as competition, but how can we help each other out and grow both of our businesses? So it's kind of been a win-win. Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, Michael Mina, that relationship has been amazing. Um, you know, I operated those two restaurants um, for, for years when we first partnered with Michael Mina. So those celebrity relationships are really important to us as well. The chef celebrities as just as much as our stadium partners as well. Sure. A lot of synergies that can take place out of those. So one of the things, it, 
it's easy to say that you want to have a deep relationship, but how are you intentional in that effort? You know, in a digital world where we're on Zoom calls, like what, what kind of specific things are you guys doing that makes you stand out from everybody else? Because for us, we're, we're very fortunate that we're loud. <laughs> so we're loud with our partners. So all of our technology partners, our food vendors, wherever we are, we're actively proactively making sure that we're top of mind. What do you guys do to stay top of mind? Gosh, that's such a great question. I would have to give that more thought. But, um, you know, again, the partner relationships are so important. I, for me, in my relationships in the 20-something restaurants, I literally am in front of them at least once a week. I travel yeah. quite a bit. We're talking about what we're doing new. We're talking about synergies at other locations, best practices beyond, you know, we're not in our own silos. We talk to each other. We've got our convention center. Um, you know, sector, we've got our racing sector, we've got our sports and entertainment sector, we have our retail sector, we have our data, um, data branch. So we're all talking to each other as to what's going on to kind of spread the word on best practices and sharing those, I think, in itself, help our partners understand kind of our girth and our scope and our stance to, um, you know, talk about other things we can be doing in general. So I think that's probably a big part of our daily, weekly conversations with them. Do you remember when you found your voice? Oh my God. Um, gosh, wow. Hmm, I think I'm still trying to find it, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are moments in everyone in everyone's career where you have the butterflies and you feel like I need to say something. I don't know if I should say something. You're there with higher level executives, people that are playing the game that you want to play, but eventually you get the courage to find your voice and to raise your hand. Do you remember when that was? You know, I think um, I think part of the thing that propels me is that I'm, I have not arrived. I have not arrived. I have not <laughs> arrived yet. True. I'm still learning every single day. I'm humbled by that. I enjoy my job. I still get butterflies, which I think is really cool. I'm not afraid to speak in a room because I've been doing this for so long and I do know what I'm doing. So I can say that with confidence. Um, and sometimes I look back and I amaze myself. It's like yeah. you look back at something and your accomplishments are like, wow, what? we just did that. That's like ridiculous. That's crazy. How did we do that? But sometimes looking back on that gives you the courage and the ambition to keep going. So um, so I haven't arrived yet. I haven't fully found my voice. It's a, it's a thing that I look forward to pretty much every single day. So we, we talk that in this business, we spend so much time, we wouldn't be in this hospitality business if we didn't love taking care of people. I mean, we take care of our guests, we take care of our stadium vendors, we take care of our partners, we take care of our team. Very rarely as leaders in the hospitality space do we take care of ourselves until it's too late. You know, we burn the candle on both ends. It's a badge of honor. These are all things that, you know, are taboo, but they need to be talked about more. What, what do you do to take care of yourself? Yeah, and that's such um, such an important thing that you brought up, and that's something that we are really focused on as a company, especially more so over the last two years, coming through COVID and just all the civil unrest that's been going on, and just the roller coaster we've all been through. Um, I think for me, um, it's it's a few things. Number one, every single day without fault, maybe not Sundays, <laughs> but I start my day um, with yoga practice, and I center myself get myself prepared, I meditate, I'm present for that moment. And then after that's over, then my mind goes, what's going on in the day, the week, the month and um, plan. But that's a big, big thing for me. Exercise, that mental clarity of some medica meditation every single day. Those are the big things. Friends and family, I have an amazing husband. I have a daughter who's 14. I'm trying to be as involved as I can in her life. She's gonna be a sophomore in high school this next year. So <laughs> that's in itself a lot. Um, and I, my, my entire family's in Chicago, so I try to at least every few weeks get together with my family and spend time with them and, and, and friends, and that, that's, that's pretty much it. But I think from a daily kind of mental check, it's definitely yoga for me. So every week, we're, we're so fortunate. We have people that listen to this show, that watch this show, that interact with the show. They interact with us on social media, whether it's on TikTok or LinkedIn or Instagram. But every week on Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we put on a Clubhouse call on the audio app Clubhouse. And we have people that come and they join us on stage. They share their story. They share their voice. 
Um, and want to give a social shout out this week to uh, Chef Charlie Marley. So at Chef Charlie Marley, he's actually the executive chef at Snapdragon Stadium. Um, that's the stadium that's going to be opening in the fall uh, where we will be, Cali Barbecue will be, along with six other local brands. But I wanted to ask you on behalf of Charlie, um, what kind of advice do you have to the executive team, to the stadium team as they open up a new venue? Oh my gosh. Um, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Right? <laughs> no pressure. San Diego's hungry for football. <laughs> you know what? It's all in the planning because once you get there, it's almost easy because you're just throwing out the playbook, right? It's just sure. operating. Take a deep breath, get the plan together, get organized, have each other's back, um, you know, look out for each other. And uh, yeah, rally, be excited about what we do. It, it, it's fun. You know, it's fun. Remember, we're here because it's fun. I, that's what I would say. So how do you guys get involved in the big picture planning? So all the, the big events that happen in these stadiums. So you're, you're, you know, whatever stadium, whatever venue you're in, if all of a sudden, you know, one of the major events comes through that stadium, what, what part does Levy Restaurants get pulled into that discussion? Oh my gosh. Um, we have this whole global staffing because we do a lot of events that are, whether it's the Grammys or yep. the U.S. Tennis Open, and they're short-term events, either they're a day or two days or three weeks long, they just pop up out of nowhere. And we literally come together, all 250 locations, to figure out a playbook and who can we, it's kind of like a poker game, like who are we taking from who and yep. how can we make this happen? And who are some key players that are resident experts that have the history and insight from prior seasons or years to do it, to lead kind of the charge for it. And then we all kind of come into play. And then we take subject matter experts from each area to put their best foot forward to basically lead whatever area of operation um, is happening at each event. So we're all very active. I've done, we call it tours. I've done several tours at USTA, at the US Tennis Open, we've nice. done Riders Cup. We've done all those kind of, you know, anomaly events and Grammys. So um, we all have a play in it. We all have a stake in it and we all have fun every year with those types of events. Well, we were fortunate to interview Matt Cooper, the executive chef at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and uh, you guys ex executed an incredible Super Bowl. So um, the fact that all these things that you guys do, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. It's inspiring um, because it's literally the sports and entertainment and the conventions too, you know, the tourism that you're bringing into the towns, into the cities, into the communities. It's so important and it's, it's exciting. It's exciting because you guys also put technology first. Uh, we wouldn't be doing the show if we didn't believe in technology, technology like Toast, technology like you guys use in, at Levy. Is there any technology that is public facing that, is, that isn't a Le something that Levy owns that you guys, that you'd like to shout out? Something that, that's impact the, the restaurant? Gosh, I don't know. We're actually toying with a lot of things right now. We're piloting some new programs. So I, I would be too quick to speak to them quite yet because we're in the pilot phase, but uh, I'll have to come back and talk about that in another Okay. We'll, we'll bring you back. We'll bring you. I'm, I'm always down to talk about robots too. So we're totally, totally cool. We'll, we'll do a, we'll do a behind the scenes with, I'll bring the rising tides creative, our video crew, and we'll come and do a behind the scenes. But uh, Jennifer Allen, thank you so much. Where can people find more about Levy? We're going to put links in the show notes. Yeah, LevyRestaurants.com. You'll find all the restaurants and the restaurant division and all of our locations in our sports and entertainment areas as well. That's awesome. So at levy.restaurants, you can follow them on social. You can always follow me at Sean P. Walchef. Um, if you know a restaurant, if you know somebody that's in the hospitality business, that's playing the game within the game, somebody that's a leader in their community, in their village, um, it doesn't matter where their restaurant is in the world. We want to hear their story. So please reach out to me. Um, you can find me on TikTok, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on all the social platforms. Um, Thank you so much for your time. Thank you to Toast for sponsoring and Pop Menu. Jennifer, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Take care. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. 
Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S H A W N P W A L C H E F. I will get you the link to the right toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about toast, you implemented toast, you did a toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your toast story with us. DM me today to learn more and be sure to check out toast.